everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this time we're going to do something a little different. This is not a quick shot, this is a full review, but we're not going to be reviewing a G.I. Joe action figure or vehicle. Instead, I wanted to look at a couple ways Hasbro gave us to carry the figures. We're going to look at the 1982 official collector display case and the 1983 pocket patrol pack. I had both of these as a kid, and I thought they were pretty cool, so let's check them out, starting with the 1982 collector display case. This is an official collector display case. This is not a licensed product. Hasbro actually produced these, and this is pretty much what it looked like on the shelves. It didn't have any outer packaging or anything like that. Uh, in fact, this one still has the price sticker. Looks like it was purchased at Rinks for $4.89. On the front, we have this really nice image that has most of the G.I. Joe characters from 1982 uh, with the Mobat tank in the background. It's very dynamic. It looks great. This same image was used on the 1983 Battle Gear Accessory Pack number one, and it was used on the card for the Pocket Patrol Pack. A modified version of this image was used on the G.I. Joe comic book issue number one. You can see it carries and displays 12 G.I. Joe team members. There's the official Hasbro logo there. Now this number 12 is a little bit of a problem because in 1982, there were 13 members of the G.I. Joe team, and there were three Cobra figures if you count the Mail Away Cobra Commander. So if you had the entire set, you could not use them all in this display case. You just have to pick the 12 you liked the best to display. On the back side, we have that G.I. Joe logo there, and we have some photos and some information about the display case. Uh, we have a photo of some of the 1982 G.I. Joe action figures. Uh, not all of them though. It looks like we are missing Hawk uh, and Grand Slam and Clutch uh, and the Cobra Officer. Then down here we have some photos showing how to use the display case. You can either set it on a shelf, and that's the way I like to do it. You can close it up and use it as a carrying case, or you can even mount it on a wall. The case is hinged on one side, and it has clips on the other side, so it opens like a book. And there's even a handy arrow right here on the top that says open here. So let's open it as instructed and take a look at the inside. Here is the inside space to display the figures, and there are some interesting choices here. Of course, uh, these are the spaces for the figures, and uh, there are strips that cover them and hold the figures in. On these strips, there are labels, and the display case came with a label sheet that had a label for each of the 1982 figures, and these were placed on here by the purchaser, uh, and so you just chose whichever labels you wanted to use and placed them wherever you wanted to. For that reason, as a collector, if you get a display case that already has the labels applied, uh, it's very unlikely that any two of them will be exactly alike. Those strips peg in and can be removed, and since they can be removed, they are often missing. These labels are interesting. They do not include the character's code name, only the specialty in red letters and the accessories in black letters. And they don't even mention all of the accessories, really only just the weapon. Uh, no helmets or backpacks are listed. This display case was reissued in 1983 and it included a new label sheet with the 1983 lineup. The display case was also available in 1984, but I'm not aware of any 1984 label sheet. Next we have a weapons armory with a removable door and this is for storing accessories. Now obviously this is not going to hold every accessory from 1982. It probably won't even hold the accessories just for the 12 figures you can fit in here but it is large enough to hold most of the weapons. It will even hold the largest weapon issued with a figure that year, Rock and Roll's machine gun. Since this door is removable, it is often missing, and there's another problem with it. It pegs on using three very thin pegs, and those can crack off, and they can even break off inside the case. Next, we have the partition for the combat command file, and this is a space for holding file cards. It pegs in exactly the same way as the figure strips do, uh, but one of the pegs actually goes behind the 
armory door. So you have to remove the armory door in order to take off this strip. There is enough space in that partition to hold all of the 1982 file cards. Holds it pretty snugly, but they do all fit and they are fairly secure in there. As mentioned earlier, there are three ways to use this display case. You can either set it on a shelf like that, or you can close it up and use it as a carrying case, or you can mount it on a wall. And it actually has notches. There are four of them. One of them is behind the armory door where you can hang it on nails uh, nailed into a wall. The problem with this is uh, these little notches here are covered by the label in the front and the back. So if you mount this on the wall, it will necessitate punching through the labels. Here is the display case filled with figures. Uh, these are the figures that this particular display case has labeled. And of course, the figure is with its particular label. And I went ahead and put the file cards in there as well. Uh, this is how it was intended to be used. Uh, but I don't prefer this as a way of displaying the figures. The figures can't always keep their accessories uh, on while they're in the display case and like I said that weapons armory is just too small to hold all of the accessories so I prefer to display the figures in a different way but I actually like to display the case itself this is what I like to do this case has some gorgeous artwork and photos and it's kind of a novelty in itself and deserves its own display and if you're using it to display figures then you are hiding this really nice artwork uh, that I think deserves to be seen. So this is what I prefer to do. Display the figures separately and then display the display case on its own. Now let's look at the pocket patrol pack from 1983. This shouldn't take nearly as much time as looking at the collector display case. Uh, there's just much less to these. Again, these are official Hasbro products. These are not licensed. These pocket patrol packs were first released carded in 1983 at retail and they were later later available through the mail. We have two of them here because we have a variant. The G.I. Joe label on them changed over the years. It started out at retail with this label, uh, the black background and that original G.I. Joe lab label, which looks pretty good. This is the most common version of the Pocket Patrol pack. Later ones updated the logo. But not just the logo. If you look at the space where the label goes, it actually changed. Originally, uh, it was a rectangle with, with an angled edge here on this side. Later, it was changed to just a basic rectangle. Uh, so it's not just the label that changed, there was a change in the mold itself. The label on this one is misapplied, unfortunately. It's a little crooked. Uh, these pocket patrol packs were included with some later releases of the Mail Away Starduster figure from 1987. Later still, the pocket patrol pack was given away for free for any orders of $20 or more from Hasbro Direct. So there should be a lot of these floating around. On the back of the pocket patrol pack we have a loop and this is for a belt. You're supposed to wear this on a belt uh, and it's very easy to use. You have a clip here in front. You just pop it open and that reveals three compartments for storing figures. I've put three random figures from 1983 in the pocket patrol pack to show you how it works. It only holds the three figures. That's it. It's really all it does. Uh, but one thing that's nice about it is there's enough space in there that most figures can still keep their accessories on and the case will still close. That's all there is to the pocket patrol pack. That's really all there is to it. It does nothing else. It just holds those three figures and nothing more. But I did have the Pocket Patrol pack as a kid. In fact, I think I had several of them. And sometimes we would use them as ammunition packs when we were role playing as soldiers. So they did have that function. When they're not using them as figures, uh, they did kind of make a nice role play toy as kind of ammunition packs. That was my review of the 1982 official collector display case and the 1983 Pocket Patrol Pack. I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it might be fun to just do something a little different. Uh, we do have full vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews every week on this channel, so please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss those. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a Patreon
Patreon if you'd like to support the channel in that way. And I do have to give a special thanks to my patrons. Uh, their generosity is overwhelming and I greatly appreciate it. I also have a coffee account if you like the videos and would like to leave me a one-time tip. I'll be coming at you with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review soon, so please don't miss that. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.